Welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy here today with Dan Olson from Natural Innovations and the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. And today, as we are in the midst of this beautiful autumn day, things are about to change yeah. for the season. That's right. And, and fall is a good time of year to think about your septic system because there's a couple of things that homeowners can do in the fall that's going to help protect their septic system from some problems that can arise in the winter time. And I know people last year maybe remember that there was a lot of concern about septic systems freezing up because we went well into the winter before we got any snow cover. And that's really what's important is, is insulation over your septic system because we want to prevent it from freezing up and, and that's what really causes the problems. So Dan, are there certain septic systems that are more susceptible to freezing than others? Yeah, there definitely are. One thing that we want people to Keep in mind, if you have a new septic system that was put in this fall before you were able to get a good uh, grass cover over it, those especially need to be covered with some type of uh, insul insulation. Um, and that can be any kind of a loose material like straw or even leaves. If you get a lot of leaves on there, you want to get about eight inches of, of cover on that septic tank. And as well as uh, what's really important is to get it over the drain area, the drain field area where the liquid waste is uh, percolating into the ground. Um, cover that area with with that insulation and also between the tank and the house where there's the pipes that come out of your house and go toward the septic tank those areas sometimes get foot traffic and other traffic over it that compresses the ground and that also allows the frost to get down faster and and quicker and so you want to make sure you cover that area too and that's generally speaking as another good practice with your septic system is to avoid any kind of traffic over the components of your septic system and that includes um, you know, even walking and especially car traffic and that type of thing because by compacting the soil is going to increase the chances of the probability of maybe having some freeze up problems. All right, and uh, we are standing here on this uh, property the owner has so kindly let us uh, use, but we're on a mound system and tell us a little bit about uh, uh, how you would prepare the same thing obviously for a mound system or how would you go about preparing? Right. Um, a lot of the systems that are being installed these days and for the past several years are mound systems and the reason they're, they create a mound like this is that that you need to have at least three feet of separation between where the waste starts to percolate into the soil and where the highest groundwater indicators are in the soil. And so that's why we often have a mound system installed. And the same kind of rules apply. You want to, you know, keep traffic off of your mound system. And um, it's getting a little late in the year to do this, but what we recommend people do is, as you get into August, uh, maybe let the, gra the grass that's growing over your mound system or your drain field, uh, don't mow it. And by simply letting that grass get longer, um, that's going to provide quite a bit of insulation uh, when fall and winter come. So that's one of the things we recommend people do is late in the year just stop mowing over your, your septic system and that's going to provide some protection of insulation. I can handle that, not mowing. All right, I'm here with Dan Olson today from Natural Innovations, a Minnesota Pollution Control Agency as well, talking about uh, getting our sewer system ready for the winter. And we'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy here with Dan Olson from the Natural Innovations uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and I've asked Dan to come and talk about the uh, about uh, getting your sewer system ready for the onslaught of winter here. And Dan, now last year we had a winter with very little snow and that affects the sewer systems more than if we say have two feet of snow. Right, there was a lot of concern last winter that people were going to have problems with their septic systems because as we went well into the winter without snow we worried about the temperatures dropping, you know, and getting well below zero without any kind of snow cover. And in that kind of situation, we probably would have had a lot of septic systems freeze up. But last winter, we kind of dodged a bullet with all the mild temps we had throughout the winter. Even though we didn't have any snow, we also didn't have those low temperatures. So we were lucky in that respect. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are some of the things maybe that, uh, you know, maybe seasonal homeowners need to know? Give us a few tips uh, before maybe heading out to the, the warmer weather. Right, well, one of the, we just mentioned the things you can do in the fall. You know, let the grass grow, get some insulation over it. Um, as we get into the winter and the temperatures start to drop, um, it's important to keep energy in that septic system. And so that means, you know, running uh, hot water, you know, um, using the dishwasher, uh, running loads of uh, hot laundry, and that kind of thing, keeping that energy in the system. Um, 
One of the worst things that can happen is if you've got a, a slow leak in one of your faucets or a bathtub or something and you get a little drip of water going into your septic system, um, that's one of the things that are going to be prone to uh, freezing up in the pipes between the house and the tank, for example. And so you want to go around your house and make sure you don't have any of those slow leaks or slow drips. If you have a septic system, that's the, one of the uh, uh, things we encourage people to do. Um, another thing we encourage people to do if you have a seasonal home that you're only out there once in a while, um, is again either have somebody come out there and use it and keep that system active um, because that's one of the things that's going to help uh, keep those things from freezing up is you know keeping uh, energy going into the system. All right some very good information here on hometown happenings as we switch seasons and the snow is uh, just knocking on our door. I think I may see some snow clouds off in the horizon but again uh, one of the main things you want to do right now before the snow falls, I mean, can you, uh, I mean, we were lucky last year, we had the snow and then it melted and then, um, you know, it snowed again, but we had the luck, I think, at the beginning of the year where people had the opportunity to, you know, maybe put that layer down, but is, is now obviously is a good time, but if it does snow and you don't get that layer down, is there still time to do that? Yeah, there is still time now until the temperatures really start to drop. Any time now between now and, say, December when things get really cold is a good time to get that insulation over the over the ground. And the thing to remember, too, that is if, if your system does freeze up, then you don't want to put insulation over the top of it because you're just it's just going to take that much longer in the spring for everything to thaw out. And so it's really important to do the insulation ahead of time, not later, because if it's too late, you don't want to put anything on there at all once it has frozen up. So that's something to keep in mind, too. So the earlier, the better. Again, you don't have to have it real deep we say six to eight inches of some type of loose material should be sufficient and and to cover um, the treatment area where your drain field is as well as any pipes and other components of the system all right so again the the loose material you're talking about leaves and straw you know is there is there an optimum is there a best uh, substance or loose material to use or nope and again if people again if they've let it grow and they've got a good you know for example natural vegetation over it that's quite uh, high and tall that alone is probably going to be enough because the other reason we want to keep the vegetation growing a little higher over the system is that's going to help catch the snow when it does come down and so the the snow combined with the insulation together make a, a very effective insulation the snow is actually beneficial over the system to help insulate it Right, to Dan Olson from Natural Innovations, um, my guest today. And uh, Dan, for, we have a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about in, uh, Natural Innovations and uh, some other information about the uh, organization? Yeah, Natural Innovations is an organization that uh, tries to raise awareness of the environmental, environmental issues around Detroit Lakes. Um, naturalinnovations.org is our website, and people can go there uh, to find out all kinds of information about the things we've worked on. And one of the things we have at that site is a lot of information about invasive species and some public service announcement videos that have been used around the state to raise awareness about that issue in this area. So uh, if people are interested in natural innovations, I guess that's be the first place to go is naturalinnovations.org and find out a little bit more about it. All right. Well, Dan, thank you so much for speaking with me today and for Hometown Happenings TV3. I'm Carol McCarthy.